fellow here this ministry. Thank you for every fellow here in this room, Lord God. Lord God, just work and move in our lives in a mighty, mighty way today, Lord. Keep us safe. Watch over our families, Lord. And Lord, just let everything we do today be through the Lord. We love you, we praise you, we talk in Christ Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen.
Jesus! 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 He was stirring up 
He agitated the spirit. Why? He was getting ready to raise the dead. That's why. Now, what does that require? Usually it requires the gift of faith, and it requires the gift of miracles. Now, there's no indication that Jesus operated in the gift, right? He had the fullness. He had, he had laid down everything that made him different from anybody else. He only operated in what we have. That's the Holy Spirit. All right? He was able to stir up the Spirit to meet the challenge of the situation. And to do that, he had to get fed up. One of the 15 secrets to John Lake's divine healing, uh, if, if you remember in the DHT, one of them is to get fed up. You have to get fed up. John Lake had 16 brothers and sisters, half of which died before he reached 20 years old. All he remembered was funerals and hearses. He got fed up with sickness. Uh, at some point, we have to get fed up with what the enemy's doing to our friends, to our loved ones, to our neighbors. Our neighbors are the people that we pass every day. Uh, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? So at some point, we have to get fed up with what the enemy's doing to those people around us. And stop being passive about, oh, it'll pass. It'll be okay. Everything's going to be fine. They'll get healed when they go to heaven. That's the attitude that most Christians have. Uh, and some of us have had it some time or another in our walk. It'll be okay. They'll, they'll be better once they pass away and go to the other side. Well, they're only 25 years old. How's that better for anybody? They haven't even lived their life. They're only three. They haven't even lived their life. There's nothing better about somebody passing on before they're ready to pass on. There's nothing better about somebody being sick or diseased. It is warfare. It is an attack of the enemy, and we have to get fed up to the point to where we're ready to snort with anger, right? Grown in the spirit. Now, go ahead. sorrows that goes on in our lives. There's nothing right about that. It is not in God's plan. It's not in His will for any of us to be sick, diseased, or die before we're ready to go. Yeah. There's also no condemnation of those who are right. led by the Spirit. So, right. you know, if you're led by the Spirit to pray for somebody in Walmart and they don't jump up out of the wheelchair right then, you, I mean, it's, it's not because you lack faith or you did what he told you to do. Right. You know, it's, it's the glory is not for you, it's for him. That's right. Uh, he's, the, he's the one that gets glory. So you know, that person may, you may spark in something in them, the love of God. Like, man, why would this person pray for me? That was bold. And right. you know, there's many times that, that I've never, I haven't seen the manifestation of what I was praying for, but that person became so bold. Later they called me and said, man, Ever since you did that, I've been in my word. Or ever since you did right. that, and the next thing you know, you know they're walking in healing, or they're walking in newness of life, right. or abundant life, just because you did what God told right. you to do at that moment in time. But remember, 
the, the actual manifestation of healing and all that, it's for the glory of God. And, and signs, wonders, and miracles follow the good news, the gospel. And that's that he so loved the world that he gave his own right. son. So, and when we act the same way, when we are living out the gospel, that I would lay down my life for you. Yeah. Right? I would take my time or my resources and I would do something and bear fruit in your life for you to pull you out of the mighty clay. Signs, wonders, and miracles follow that good news and that gospel. Right. So just remember, there's no condemnation. Don't don't be discouraged. You hear stories. Todd White prayed for a thousand people before he ever right. uh, saw anything. That's right. why. Why is that? Well, we live by faith and not by sight. Right. We live by faith. And, and the thing is, and you said it perfectly, the person called and said, you know, ever since you did that, I've been reading my word. I've been doing this and this. Every time you lay hands on somebody and minister to somebody, you are releasing life in that. Right. Yeah. And at that moment, maybe you didn't release enough life to get them out of the wheelchair, but you released enough life into them to make a difference in their life to now they're not in the mully grubs, they're not in the depressed state, they're not, you know, woe is me. They got life in them now because you release life. Now you may go to the next one and you realize that something had entangled you, you released a little bit of life into them and now you say, okay, Father, that was good, but I want more. I want to see more. I, I know there's more than just releasing a little bit of life. You may go to the next one, and more life comes out of you. The, the, the rivers of living water begins to flow more freely through you, and you release more life, and the next one may jump right up out of the wheelchair. Take the face, Lord, and Lord. Right. So, you so, know, maybe God says, man, hey, he starts blessing you for your obedience. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you were obedient. You didn't grow discouraged. There was no shame. And you, when you encountered this person, you did what I told you. And those who are faithful, because we talked about it, a lot of it, it's not a God. God will, if God will, it hasn't ever changed. He wants that person to come out of that wheelchair. Right. I mean, you just got, you know, and as we're learning that, we're believing that, but the manifestation of that fruit Faith to faith, glory to glory. Maybe we're not mature enough. Maybe we're struggling with our belief. You know, right? the the paralytic man, or the not the paralytic, but the, the demon possessed father, son, father. He was like, I believe, but help my own belief. In the same belief, right. breath, right? I believe whatever you tell me, dude, but help my own belief. Now, can I tell you how to build on that? David said, "Lord, you was with me with the bear." You were with me with the lion. Surely you'll be with me with this giant. He knew. If Faith. it had been day one, David was born right. again day one, right. he, he may not have had that experience. Right. Yeah, but he still lived by faith, though. Right. Just, you know, we. it's great to reference our experiences and to be encouraged, but yes, a brand new, born again, baby Christian that day could lay hands on someone and they could be healed. Right. God would. God would. Right. We yeah. just don't know that we can do that. We're not taught that we can do That's that. Right. But we can. You better and, oh, you better go. Hey, let's call Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> hey Jordan, we got a guy down here. I, I could I could hear you on the other phone. Well go pray for him, dude. What do you mean? Right. I'm busy. Right. You know? I bless you. Go go lay hands on him. Do it. You know? You've got the same spirit you in you that I got. Yeah. But see you and, and here's a, here's another thing. All right. I brought up David because you need to remember when you prayed for somebody with a headache headache left immediately. God, you were with me when I prayed for that person's headache. The next time you pray for somebody with some joint pains, Father, you were with me with a headache. You were with me when I prayed for joint pains. You went to the next one and you saw something else, sickness, a cold or something, immediately leaves them up. Remember these things so that when you get to the person with the, in the wheelchair, it stirs you up. It was just a headache, but it's no difference than the headache and the cripple. Yeah. Yeah. It's still an attack. It's really about what you believe. Right. So yeah. it's, it's, okay, it may look like a giant. You know, the headache was no big deal. I grabbed it by the beard and killed it. No yeah. problem. Right? The line, the, the joint pain, the knee pain, the leg, whatever. No problem. I grabbed it, killed it. Now I got this giant in front of me. Somebody in a wheelchair. What am I going to do? Yeah. And I've got to say, you remember how God was with you, with the others, 
He's still with you for this one. That's a dead person. That's surely that's a giant. Yeah. Now, how am I going to raise the dead? Uh, Sound like Jesus was stirring the waters of the Savior. Right. Well, yeah, and we're going to get to that. Quit jumping ahead, Chris. Yeah, uh, Keith, Keith. <laughs> Keith. I know that's Keith, but Chris always jumps ahead like that, so that's why I said that. <laughs> you read the book. Huh? Absolutely. Uh, I love what Josh said. That, that, that really does bring a lot of balance. Because you know, the Bible is clear. So there's one plant, one water, so God gives you that tree. And it can be discouraging. <laughs> you pray for someone and you don't see it right away. Right. You know, but the scripture is very clear in several different places. It says, when you pray, believe that you receive. That's right. You know, and you shall have. You know, and it might be right then, or it might be, you know, three minutes from now, or it might be, you know. As they go. Right. So, um, Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and you'll receive, seek and you'll find, knock and it shall be open for you. Whoever asks shall receive, whoever seeks shall find, and whoever knocks it shall be open. In, uh, in Mark chapter 11, when Jesus is teaching on faith, <coughs> he just spoke to the fig tree, and the disciples witnessed, and they noticed that it had dried up at its roots, and he was like, basically, he goes from the fig tree to the mountain, and he's saying, you won't just speak to these type, smaller things, the lion and the bear, but you'll speak to the bigger things, the giant, and he says, have faith in God, for surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes the things he says will be done, he'll have whatever he said. Therefore I say to you, whatever thing you ask, when you pray, believe. believe. Yeah. And you will receive them. That you receive them and you will have them. Yep. So when we pray, so no matter what, like Josh was saying, we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. <coughs> and don't get discouraged. I mean, that's for me too. I mean, don't get discouraged. Right. Lay hands on somebody and they don't see the manifestation right away. You know, just when you pray, believe. That's right. You know, know that it's been done. You release life at that moment. <clears throat> don't back up and say, well, that didn't work. Because then you negate everything you just did. Well, yeah, in, in Philippians it says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, <clears throat> let your request be known to God. So, yeah, you know, you, you speak to the situation and you give thanks. You know, you might even want to tell the person, you know, I, we're not seeing it right this moment, but my faith is done. Let's right. give God thanks. You know, and just tell, begin to tell them how much God loves them. And God has a plan for you. I, that's one of my go-tos. That's true across the board. You know, God right. has a plan for you. You know, right. and Begin to stir up faith inside of them. But when good. you pray, believe. believe. When you pray, give thanks. Right. Don't get discouraged. <laughs> Go to the next person. That's right. You, know, you might not see it, like Josh said. You know, and the man that's double-minded, and don't let him think he'll receive anything from the Lord. A man right. has a plan B. Right. Like if you look in James, ask for wisdom. It's talking about this trial and everything you're going through, and it's talking about wisdom. It says, but don't be tossed to and fro. A double-minded man, don't you know he won't receive anything? So if you're, right. You know, if we're if we're asking because our grandma, we saw our grandma do it, or you know, we have this plan B, and we're asking for God to rescue us or help us, but we have a plan B. There's a that's a double-minded man. Right. He won't receive nothing. Faith is faith. You got to be all in. Yep. You know, is God good? Does He want to do this? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's good. Uh, as, as, okay. as long as we have the attitude, oh, I'm sorry for you. This is awful. Oh, God, please touch this person. Forget it. That's not how healing occurs. Healing occurs whenever you stand in Jesus' place and minister for him. You say what he would say. He wouldn't say, God, please touch this person. Right? It's, it's funny because, and we'll get there in the end, but when he, when Jesus got to the tomb, they rolled the stone away. He said, Father, I thank you that you hear me. And then he said that so the people around would know that he's connected to the Father. 
right? And then he turned and commanded Lazarus to come forth. What we do, I'm guilty just like everybody else, I look at Lazarus first, and then I turn to God and say, God, bring him out. And uh, Jesus didn't talk to God about the problem. <clears throat> Come on. He thanked the Father yeah. that he always hears him. So the people around would know that he's connected to the Father. And then he turned to the problem and so, spoke yeah. to the problem. Yeah. Right. That's the way we're supposed to operate. Not speak to God about the problem. That's right. We speak to the problem about God. It's, it's hard to understand to look at the works of Jesus and understand because he was Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. But he was man. You know? Right. The, the Father is the one, you know, that gave Jesus the power, the Holy Spirit, the only thing without measure. You know, but when Jesus came, <coughs> God became as a man. Right. Walking in the Holy Spirit. And the same, the same thing that he had is what we have. That's right. And That's right. He, yes, he was Jesus. He did not have a sin seat. He walked perfectly. Right. And he hated righteousness. I mean, he hated iniquity and loved righteousness. Right. And he had the spirit above his fellows. But he was fully <clears throat> a man as he right. was walking. And he was true. tempted in every point just like we are. That's right. So, but, yeah. So, I mean, the Bible says that God can't be tempted with evil. Right. Jesus right. was tempted. Yeah, that's right. In his flesh. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a lot yeah. of. Them. Yep. You'll mess up the whole. You'll mess up the whole. You gotta be there. careful. <laughs> you gotta be careful. But we, you know, if he was trying to that glory now, though. Yeah. He yeah. said, you'll, you'll do the things you've seen me do. Yeah. You know, so if Jesus as a man could say, I am the resurrection and the life. You know, so we as men, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. Right. So can we say we are a resurrection? Well, yeah. the same power, that, the dunamis dynamite explosive power that raised him from the dead, that's what lives in us. That's right. Exactly. Do you have something? Yeah. But, so what Jesus, what Jesus did was we were, when, when we were in the garden of Adam, Adam and Eve had power, dominion over all things, dominus power already over all of it already. When Eve sinned and Adam followed suit and they sinned, God took that power back, or the enemy took that power to gain his power and his authority over the world. When Jesus came, he came to give us that power back because he mm -hmm. took that power from the enemy, died on the cross to give us the ability to have that power again, but he couldn't take the sin nature away from us. He had to give us the new power and the new nature to be able to walk in the newness of him. And he was our example on how to walk in it. But also I wanted to talk about... Um, what you were talking about earlier about praying and if, if, I mean, First John three twenty one, it says beloved if your heart does not condemn us we have confidence before God so if when you're praying and you feel that heart like oh well, I'm, I'm wasting my time because I haven't done this then your, your heart's condemning you so you don't right. have your confidence in it if you have confidence in knowing that whatever you ask in the Father's name whatever you speak to will listen to you then it says, whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing to his sight. Because he told us to do it, we're keeping his commandments. So we can find confidence in the fact that he's going to hear us and answer it one way or the other. It may not be manifested right in front of us, but it will be manifested in some way or some form, somehow. There's a reason for you doing what you do. Yeah. It's a confidence thing. And then it's the same thing like you were talking about David. He, you know, killed the bear and then the lion and then he did the, the giant because he said he did these. It's the same thing with like if when, when we're walking in our addiction and then we start to learn who Christ is and we start learning who we are, the more that we resist the devil and the more he flees, the easier it gets as we do it. It's the same thing as when we are healing or we're walking in the prophetic or walking in the gifts. The more that we do it, the more that we see it, the stronger and the easier it gets, the more confidence you have right. in him. It's, it's, it goes past just overcoming an addiction. You can take the same concept that you use to gain your identity of gaining your confidence in the Lord to be used towards using the gifts and walking in the gifts. You gain more confidence the more you do it. That's right. That's right. And, you know, I, I've said this before. 
Now, I know Jesus could have raised the dead from the get-go, right? But he turned on water to wine. And it was a progression through the Gospels of what Jesus did. He didn't raise the dead right off from the beginning. Could he? Of course he could have. Can we? Yeah. But he turned water to wine and progressed from there. So Even the levels of raising people from the dead. Right. Yeah. So he's our example. And the more you do it, the more the more it, it, it stretches your faith, it, it builds your faith muscle. We have all the faith we're ever going to get. When we got saved, he gave us all the faith we're ever going to get. And so, to measure faith. So we have to exercise that and build that up. God's faith. God's faith. Right. I think that's cool. Uh, if you look, if Jesus prayed the temple twice, he cleansed it at the beginning of his ministry and he cleansed it at the end of his ministry. The first time he cleansed the temple, he referred to it as my father's house. The last time he cleansed the temple towards the end of his ministry, he said, my house. You know, and he's like, you know, he was faithful in what God, God told him to do. So now he's like entrusting with that. Right. He's entrusting him with his assignment. The same thing with us, you know. That's we're good. faithful, you know, over the little. Yeah. You know, we're faithful and you know, faith in line is there. We do everything we expect us to do. And then we finally face the giant and he makes him know we're right in our assignment. He ends up in the house. You know, right. <coughs> yep. So, That's good. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Now, this is what you say. In the name of Jesus, I command you, devil, to back off. It's a Leave this person. Be healed now. When you stand there and say, when, when you stand there and say that, your attitude changes. Your voice changes and your tone changes. Why? It's because you're not begging God to heal. You don't ask God to do what he's already right. done. By his stripes, you yeah. were healed. Right. He's already done it. Now, it's just a matter of getting that problem off of them. That problem should have already left them alone. It didn't, so you have to get fed up and chase it off. Usually, that requires that you get upset. When people get upset, they tend to get loud. The loudness is not what does it. No matter how loud you get, if you ain't got no faith. Right? It's not the loudness that produces the results. It's the fact that getting upset and getting fed up stirs you up to get loud. The loudness is a result of being stirred up. You can get stirred up and be loud, or you can get stirred up and be quiet. Now, once you learn how to get stirred up, you also have to learn how to do it quietly, especially if you're in a hospital. You can't go in a hospital room and Devil, go! And every patient down the hallway is going to wonder what's going on. And the nurses are going to come and ask you to leave, right? So you learn how to get stirred up. You learn how to do it quietly. Uh, there's times you may want to get loud. But it's not in the loudness. You, 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 you don't get to yell and scream in a hospital. You, you can't just be yelling and screaming and think that it's going to do it. You have to get fed up and you have to get stirred up. Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift that is within you. Right. Right? He was telling Timothy, stir it up. Agitate the water. Stir up the spirit within you. Jesus said, if any man thirsts, let him come to me, and I will give him to drink. When it said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, it was speaking of the Holy Spirit, which had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Now, what was he doing here? He was stirring up the water of the spirit that was in him to get the job done. Now, do you see how natural that is? And it's a natural progression, right? That's what I mean by natural. It's a natural progression. You begin to stir it up. You begin to agitate it. You begin to roll the water. You get fed up. You get upset. You get mad about what the enemy's doing. You're stirring up the spirit in you. You start groaning in the spirit, right? Now, notice that when Jesus groaned in the spirit, it was not out of weakness. It was not out of sorrow. It was not out of sympathy. He was mad. If you go to Strong's Concordance, there's a certain level of word definition that they give you. 
But if you go deeper and look it up in the Thayer's Bible dictionaries, you can get varying levels. And it gets a little more specific. And this is so good. In the Strong's, it says to snort with anger, right? To have indignation on. But if you go to the Thayer's, it actually says to snort like a war horse about to go into battle. Hmm. That is good. Man, that is good. We have to get, we have to groan to where we're snorting like a war horse about to go into battle. Come on. That brings a whole new connotation to Jesus groaning in the spirit. Yeah. Think about the movies that you saw and you've seen them really pinpoint the horses snorting and ready and getting that foot down, you know, and they, they know they're fixing to go into battle. That's where we have to get to. Snort with anger like a war horse about to go into battle. When it said he groaned in the spirit, it did not mean that it came out of his soul. Get this. It's not emotion. There's nothing where God gave us emotion, but this is not coming out of emotion. It, it, he groaned out of the spirit, not out of the soul. Inside, he began to snort like a war horse ready to go to battle. He was getting agitated inside saying, no, this is not happening. This is not, this is not saying this way because this is not right. This is not staying this way because this is not right. That's what he's saying. That's what you have to get a hold of. It cannot stay this way. My loved one cannot stay sick because it's not right for them to be sick. It's not right for them to have diabetes. It's not right for them to have cancer. It's not right for them to have any other disease. It's not right. It's not right for my loved one to be blind or deaf or crippled. It is not right. We have to get to a place to where we're groaning in the spirit, snorting like a war horse about to go into battle. The groaning in the spirit that Paul was talking about can come on you. This is part of the travailing. When Paul said, I travail in birth again, part of that had to do with the troubling inside where you start to agitate and stir up and get fed up. Now, you will start to feel that travailing and it will take on a physical representation. It starts in the spirit and it will generally overtake you. I remember one, one incident that really stands out to me that, that I can vividly remember. Uh, several years ago, and I told, I shared this with y'all, uh, the woman that had the suicide spirit coming to the church. And I remember sitting there listening to her while another lady talked to her. And I remember this stirring in my spirit. And it was like, it took on a whole new physical representation in me because I didn't think about it. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't plan it. It just came up because I had done stirred it up in me and I couldn't take it anymore. And I stood up and I looked directly at her and I said, come out in the name of Jesus. And when I did, all hell broke loose for 15 minutes. And she started manifesting and her neck stretched about that far. And she's just going back and forth and she starts speaking in a demonic language. And I remember Lester Sumrall said, you don't let them talk. And I looked at her, I said, shut up in the name of Jesus. About three times and she shut up. And I got that spirit out of her, but it stirred up. I stirred it up and agitated and rolled that water in me. I was groaning. I was snorting like a war horse about to go into battle. And I, I remember that one very vividly. The woman was like, they just keep telling me to pull the trigger. And it just stirred it up in me. And I'm like, that's not right. That is not right. When a sick person or a diseased person is laying in the bed and they can't live life to the fullest, these same thoughts go through their head. Just pull the trigger. I'm just ready to go. Go ahead. Would it be fair to say, since we're all, everybody is potentially a child of God, if, you know, as, we have a lot of parents in here, and a lot of the guys have children. Just think about how mad you would be if there was some lunatic trying to hurt your child, it's basically like with the demonic or a sick or you know, the sickness or disease, and then the 
you're trying to put this on your child, how angry would you get at this person that's trying to take your child out and try to relay that over into the spirit? Because this is potentially God's child right here. Right. Whoever it is. Right. And maybe they already are. Maybe they're just being oppressed. Or maybe they're not saved yet. Maybe a life's in the balance. You know, a life, I mean, with Lazarus, it was a life, life or death thing. He's already dead. So, I mean, he's either going to stay dead or and a lot of times the lives are in the balance. Right. And that's something to get upset about. You know, this person's trying to hurt my child. The enemy's trying to hurt my child. And just let that holy indignation build up inside of you. No, you're not going to keep my child in bondage, you know? And no, you're not going to keep my child sick right. or depressed or whatever. So, um, anyway, I think that's just a cool way to look at it. Like, yeah. How would you respond if somebody was attacking your child? Right. Would you get upset or would you just kind of be like, oh, it's okay? You know? uh-huh. I'm sorry this has happened. That's awful. Yeah. I know for me, like, <laughs> any of my girls, I mean, if somebody was trying to get them, I'm going after them. Right. You know? Right. Like, look. You think about. Uh, General, you know, it's, I mean, you got to, it's a life or death. You're going to do whatever it takes to get that child back, you know. Uh, what, what you're speaking is, is more truth than we like to realize that the enemy is coming after our children. Yeah. You look at everything, look, I, the enemy, if you go back through the Bible, the enemy has always come after children, right? I know he comes after all of us, but look at what the children are going through today. You said a mouthful. I mean, you got children being attacked by drag queens. You got children being attacked by the whole LGBT community. You got children being attacked by underground <laughs> systems that do awful things. Um, I mean, children. Yeah, the next generation. You, you think about this now. Like you said, if somebody's coming after your child, if you got a little girl and she goes into the bathroom, and you see some guy that looks like a woman go in there, you're not going to stand back. No, I'm going in. That indignation is going to rise up in you, and something's fixing to happen, right? So why not do the same thing in the spirit when you see the enemy attacking somebody in their body in some other way? Why do we need to wait till it's our own children, right? And again, if it's our own children, it may be a little different, but... We need to have that same attitude towards the children of God and towards people that are potentially children of God. Because everybody is a potential child of God. You're, you're pulling them out of hell. Right. And into the kingdom of life. Right. You know, so there's an urgency there. That's right. Um, we're going to stop right there. We didn't get to the word trouble. So we're going to get to the word trouble next week. Uh, that's going to be good too. And uh, But we did get grown out pretty good. So, is this good? Does this make sense? Yeah? Y'all ready to snort like a war horse about to go into battle? <laughs> that's Romans 8. Huh? Yeah, Romans 8 talks about groaning. Yeah, yeah. You know, groaning in the spirit. <coughs> you know, that's the, a lot of times that's the intercessional. Right. It goes along with it. It comes for intercessional. You know, where the spirit is beginning to move along with groaning, where it's just compassion against whatever that situation is. It's probably right. a pretty dark situation if you can start rolling into it. Right. It's kind of like with Lazarus. And, and it, it is the same, and we'll get there. It is the same, and uh, I forget what scripture is on the somewhere in there. It's not, uh, it's not that one. But it's in there, and, and, it, and it is the same word used that Jesus used, or that was used here in John. So it means the same thing. In Brimah Amah, did you get that? <laughs> Y'all stand up. Mm-hmm. All right. Take somebody from right here. Come on, Bernie. Hey, God, thanks for the word we got this morning. Thank you for smiling, God. It's going to be a just to allow us to give and learn more and more about you, God. Just touch each and every one of us while we go out here in this mission field. Let us have a wonderful day. Let us just work hard with our hands and, and be safe. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Joe.